on today's episode, Ishikawa's seven fundamental quality rules. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Ask most about Japanese people that made important contributions to the modern world and the answers typically include the founders of large manufacturing companies such as Mitsubishi, Toyota, Sony, and Honda. Now, successful as these figures are, there's a much less well-known Japanese engineer that deserves to be remembered for seven simple principles that led Japanese industry from low-quality commodity production of simple consumer goods like bicycles and umbrellas to the high-tech powerhouse that we know today. He was Dr. Kaoru Ishikawa, a Japanese engineer and quality control expert. Now, manufacturing quality control had been known for decades in America, with pioneering work by people like Schuert and Duran and Deming, but outside a few large American corporations, very little progress had been made since the 1930s until the post-war period. Now, Ishikawa changed this, and although he's famous for introducing the concept of quality circles, his seven fundamental principles are the foundation of modern manufacturing quality. The first is customer focus. Ishikawa defined customer focus as the implementation of customer feedback in the product design, development, and manufacturing processes. Now, it seems obvious today, but in the 50s and 60s, it was not uncommon for even large manufacturing firms to use limited market research and even intuition to determine product attributes. The second is continuous improvement. This seems so obvious it's almost trite, but Ishikawa defined the term to mean not simply better product quality, but more efficient production processes with less waste. The pioneering concept here was that more efficient and more tightly run production processes had the knock-on effect of improving product quality, something which was not immediately apparent in older systems which attempted to inspect quality into a product. The third is employee involvement, another one which seems obvious, but which ran counter to the original mass production concept of breaking complex tasks down into simple steps to allow unskilled or semi-skilled labor to perform them. This is actually the heart of the quality circle. The fourth is to conceptualize production flow from a process perspective rather than as a sequence of individual tasks. Now, this is harder to do than it looks, especially where multiple departments are involved in a production process. Each department is incentivized to act defensively when troubleshooting quality problems rather than cooperatively. Ishikawa understood that this finger pointing was fundamentally counterproductive. The fifth is the involvement of upper management. High-level management personnel were traditionally uninvolved in quality processes in large manufacturing firms, but Ishikawa noted that without buy-in at the front office, quality assurance systems would never be properly funded or comprehensively implemented in new production processes when time is money. The sixth is decision-making through data. Now this goes without saying that all decision-making in production processes are evidence-based, but that wasn't always the case. Considerable bias is possible in measurement even today, and weeding out that bias can be surprisingly difficult. But without this, eventually data itself becomes a variable instead of an input into a function or a set of differential equations on the road to inspect production. The seventh and last is total supply chain commitment, which for Ishikawa meant supplier involvement in the quality process. In my experience in the automotive industry, the relationship between OEM customers and tier one suppliers was adversarial at best, and price and delivery frequently trumped quality and contract negotiations. Ishikawa saw the flaw in this approach early, and his ideas resulted in Japanese manufactured goods developing a global reputation for high quality and reliability. Ishikawa died in 1989 at age 73 with multiple awards from the Japanese government and international quality organizations. His fishbone diagram or Ishikawa chart is well known in quality circles, but the interesting thing about the seven basic principles are that none of them are rooted in mathematics. To perfect quality assurance, management structures must come first, and then the number crunching, and that's the key takeaway for all modern manufacturing. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.